Welcome to episode 68 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today I will show you how to generate anime illustrations in Comfy UI. I don't have much experience with anime, I work more with cartoons, but this model called Netayume version 3.5 seems to be pretty good at anime generation. You also commented that you wanted to see an episode on anime, so let's get started. If your Comfy UI is updated, the Comfy UI team also released a workflow. They added more options, and now it's easier to find what you need. You can search for Yoom, and you'll find their workflow. I made some changes to that workflow to make it easier to use, added an upscaler, and adjusted some settings. Let's start with a basic workflow, and then we can move to a more complex one. This basic workflow only needs one model and no extra custom nodes installed, so everyone should be able to run it. But you need more than 8 gigabytes of VRAM to load this 10 gigabyte model. To download the model, just click here, then navigate to your Comfy UI folders. Inside the Models folder, you'll find the Checkpoints folder where you need to place this model. After the download is complete, press R to refresh, and you can load it into this node. The workflow is simple. We have two text encoders, one for the positive prompt and one for the negative prompt. Shift adjusts how the model samples its outputs, affecting the look and feel of the result. The default value is 4. For the K sampler, you can use 30 to 40 steps. For CFG, you can use 4 or 5. For samplers and schedulers, I got good results with these values. The result is then decoded and saved. You can choose the width and height from here, and values around 1024 pixels work well. You can go higher too. I managed to do full HD as you'll see later, but it needs more processing power. Let's run the workflow, and we got this anime girl that looks pretty good. I included more information in this node that is useful. You can find here details about the model. It's an open source model, so you can check from time to time to see if they released new versions. If we go to Files and Versions, you'll find the version I'm using in this video here, the version 3.5 of this model. The prompting is a little different, so make sure you check this prompt book. On this page, you can learn more. This model uses an LLM, like Gemma, as a text encoder, and you can prompt in Chinese, Japanese, and English. They also give example prompts. As you can see, it's mainly keyword-based but it also works with normal language like we use on Flux models. You can copy a prompt from there, paste it into Comfy UI, and test it. Now here's the actual prompt part. We get better results if we leave those instructions in the prompt and then add our own text there. Let's run it. And this is the result we got. If we look at the negative prompt, you can see it uses similar instructions to create negative prompts. The more words you add, the better you can guide the AI to do what you want. Add all kinds of details, like camera, lighting, environment, anything that helps. As you can see, they recommend always adding that in the prompt. They mention that it works with natural language and Danburu tags, but they have less training than the keyword-based prompts you saw before. They also explain how to write good negative prompts and provide some recommended settings. They talk about formulas too, so I really recommend checking this page and experimenting to get better results. They have formulas for different LLMs like Gemini or ChatGPT. You can copy one of these formulas and give it to ChatGPT to help adjust it for your needs. Another thing I wanted to show is the styles you can use with this model. On this page, there are over 900 style references you can add to your prompt. You can see examples with different prompts and how they affect the result. Some have more of a line art look, some look more like paintings, and some have no line art at all. For example, let's say I like the style called 6VCR. I can copy the name of that style and test it in Comfy UI. But before we test it, let's generate one without a style using a fixed seed so we can compare how it affects the prompt. I will prompt for a simple portrait of a girl with purple hair, and we got exactly what we asked for. If you wonder how much time it takes on a 24 gigabyte VRAM card, it usually takes around 12 seconds, but since I'm recording now, it adds a few extra seconds. If we want to add more to the scene, we can add something like glasses maybe. Now that we see how it looks without a style, let's try adding that style to see how it changes the result. I like to add it at the beginning of the prompt, 
so we got this style that doesn't seem to have line art, only colors and shading. I saw people using an at sign in front of the style, and it seems to help with the result. Let's test another style, maybe this one that has more of a painting look. I'll replace it in the prompt and try again. And of course, you can add multiple styles and combine them. The result now has that painting look. This other style also looks different, so let's give it a try, and the result is this one. Styles affect the overall look and are useful when you want to get a certain feel. Let's go back to the default prompt with no style and change the ratio. You can use all kinds of ratios. If you have a good video card, you can increase it to full HD, and as you can see, it managed to do it, but it took much more time. Instead of 13 seconds like before, it took 36 seconds. Still, it's a good way to get full HD images for social media or to use for image to video. Because AI prefers to use multiples of 16 for width and height, the 1080 value is not divisible by 16. That's why in the node, it's adjusted to the closest value, which is 1088. We can fix that to get perfect full HD if we want. Double click on the canvas and search for a node called image crop. Now, from VAE decode, the link goes through that crop node and then connects to the save node so it will resize it to whatever value we add in this node. I'll add the full HD value, and now when I run it, it will do a small crop and give me the exact size I need. I use this all the time, so I hope it's helpful. Let me show you another trick I use. Search for a node called Flux Resolution Calculator, which is part of this custom node pack. You can change colors if you want. Then connect width to width and height to height, and if you want, you can also preview what the new width and height will be by connecting the resolution output to a preview any node. Like any node, you can change the color, resize it, or rename the title to make sense to you. Now it's easy to select the aspect ratio you need. For example, I can choose a slim vertical format, and when I run it, you can see what size it will generate. If you want a bigger size, you can increase the value from the megapixel setting. The result looks good. Let me show you another thing I like to change. Many times I just copy and paste my prompts here without being careful not to mess up the instructions. So it's better to have the instructions separate and the prompt separate. Let me show you how in a new workflow. Double click on the canvas and search for a node called concatenate, which is part of Comfy UI Core. Here we can combine two strings of text. You can have prompt one on top and prompt two on the bottom, and the result will be a new string. To see it, search for a preview any node that will let us preview the resulting text. When I run the workflow, we can see those two texts combined. Right now, it doesn't have any delimiter, so we can add a comma if we want, and now the result looks like this. Or we can add a comma and a space, or just a space to make it look cleaner. Now, with that knowledge, let's implement it in our workflow. I will copy the instruction first, then add the concatenate node. For the first string, I'll use the instruction I just copied. And for the second string, I'll copy and paste the prompt with the girl. For the delimiter, I'll use a space. Now the node is ready, we just need to connect it. Drag a link, and you should see a dot in the top left corner of that text input where you can connect the link. Now that field is disabled and it will take values from the concatenate node. I can click on the gray dot to collapse it to save space since we don't use it anymore. I'll place the concatenate node there and rename it to positive prompt. I'll change the color to green. Now when we run it, we should get the exact same results since it's the same prompt, but instead of one long text, it's two shorter prompts combined. As you can see, we got the same image, so it works. Let's adjust the prompt now. A simple word replacement can change the results because it's using that LLM instruction to generate the prompt. Even with a fixed seed, the result can look different. We can also change the style using different words like realistic anime style to get a more modern anime look. Let's move now to the next workflow, the one that uses an upscaler. I have here the same node to choose the ratio and the concatenate node for easy prompting. I used a fixed seed because I need it for the upscaler, so make sure you change that if you keep the same prompt. Let's run it. What's different here is that we need an upscale model. You can use your favorite model, 
or you can download this one and place it in the Upscale Models folder. It also includes extra nodes that you install from the manager. I'm using this clean VRAM node, which helps when your video card doesn't have much VRAM. And the result is this anime illustration. It's not always perfect, sometimes it can mess up the hands, but just try a different seed or prompt until you get something that works. Once you're happy, enable the upscaler from here and run the workflow. About the upscaler model, you can use whichever you prefer. I used Nomos 2 since I usually use it for photos, but if you want a sharper result, you can try Syax or the Anime Sharp model. To get more models, go to the Manager, then to the Model Manager. For the type, select the Upscale type, then click Install for the one you want. They are pretty small in size, and after installation, you can select them in that node. For the denoise, I got good results with 0.1. You can increase it a little, but if you go too high, you might get double heads because of the tile diffusion node. If you run out of VRAM, reduce the number of batches to 1, but if you have more VRAM, you can increase it to 4, 8, or even more to speed up the upscale. We got double the size now, and it's a little clearer as you can see here. This upscaler adds a bit of texture, like in the grass and rocks. Depending on your illustration, if it's more of a clean style, you might want to try the Anime Sharp model. If I test it, you can see it makes the image sharper, which helps if your anime style is more like a vector clean illustration. Let's disable the upscaler and try a landscape format, and I'll test more prompts. In this case, I used a style from that site I showed you with a prompt for a blonde girl, and I got this anime portrait illustration. This style adds a bit of texture that makes it look good. Let me try a different style with a cat and a mushroom. This one has that digital painting look with no line art. You can also make male characters, not only female ones, and the model is pretty uncensored, so use it responsibly. You can do line art as well. It has that handmade ink pen look. You can also add watercolor in the prompt to get different anime styles. This one looks quite nice. Let me upscale it really quick. You can see the before and after. If we look right now at our text to image workflow, you can see that the value we set on empty latent goes to K sampler. But if we want to convert it to an image to image workflow, here's what you need to do. First, delete this node since we need an actual image, not an empty one. Add a load image node. Now, this node can't be connected directly to latent because it's pixel based. So we need to encode it so the AI model can understand what's in the image. After that, we can connect it to latent. Now, this VAE encode node also needs to know how to encode, so we need to connect it to the VAE model, which in this case is integrated into the main checkpoint. So now the workflow is an image to image. All we need to do is load an image. I'll use this portrait of a girl. Sometimes the images you load might be too big, so what I like to do is resize them to make sure the size is not too large. There are many nodes that let you do that to a certain max size, but in this case, I'll just use an upscale image node. Now the load image node first goes to that upscale node, and then it's encoded. For the upscale method, any should work fine. For width and height, you can adapt to your ratio and even enable crop if it's different. Then we need to adjust the prompt. Let's say I want a girl with red hair. Very important, we need to adjust the denoise value. If I try a value of 0.5, you can see I got my girl with red hair in a similar mood to the uploaded image. If we reduce the denoise value, you can see the AI doesn't have as much power to change the image, so we only get a small variation of the original. The outfit is a little different, and the girl now has red eyes. The more we increase the denoise, the more power the AI has to change the image, and the more different it will look compared to the original. If you don't have a good enough video card, or you are on a laptop and still want to generate, you can use Running Hub to run it in the cloud. They offer a few daily credits when you log in, and the subscriptions are quite affordable. I'll add links to the workflows in the video description, so when you access them, you'll see something like this. All you have to do is launch it in the cloud, then wait for it to load. You'll have the same workflow running in the cloud with the same settings. Just add a prompt, then select the ratio you want for your generation, and that's all. Press the Run button, 
or if you have a Plus subscription, you can use this option to get a better video card. Let's run it with a simple run first. You'll see in the task list how it's running. Because it's on the cloud, even if they have the same card as me with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, it's a bit slower, so it only consumes a few coins. You can change the seed and try again. Let's use the plus run this time. This one consumed a few more credits, but was faster. If you decide you want to upscale it, just enable it from here and run it again. You can adjust the batch size to make it go faster since they have enough VRAM. For the next generation, I'll use 8 to speed it up a bit. It finished generating, and we got the upscaled version of the image, which is much clearer. Now, with a batch value of 8, let's try again, and this time it was a few seconds faster for the upscaler. It's pretty easy to generate in the cloud, and everything works because you can't publish a workflow that doesn't work. So what's next? Maybe you can use a nano banana workflow. It uses an API, but they offer a few free generations each day from what I saw. You can launch this workflow, and it's simple. You can upload one or more images by adding multiple load image nodes and connecting them. Then you add the prompt and run it. In this case, I wanted the ratio to be on auto because I wanted to keep it consistent, but you can change it from here if you want. You can see it says it consumed zero dollars and only used a few coins. So even if it's API based, you have a few free generations. Only after that will it use credits from your wallet, but from what I understand, it's still pretty cheap. You can see in the result it changed the girl's hair, and now I can download this image and maybe use it to create a video. I have here a Sora 2 image to video workflow. Let's launch it in the cloud. For this one, you also get a few free generations. I'm not sure how long they'll keep that free, so take advantage while you can. The workflow is simple, like any API nodes workflow. We load our image, I'll take that red-haired girl, and wait a few seconds for it to upload. Then you prompt what you want, maybe the girl puts on a hat and then smiles and says hi. For model, you can select portrait or landscape, and you can also adjust the duration. Let's run it. The generation started, and it says it can take three to five minutes. I generated another video before, and this is the second generation. I'm not sure how many are free, I think around three to five generations. You can see it says it costs zero dollars again, just a few coins, and it took under three minutes to generate. I got a video where the girl is putting on the hat. You can probably get better prompts with ChatGPT, but it's not bad for a first try. If you go to your profile, you'll find the wallet that you can recharge. As you can see, I generated with zero dollars in the wallet, and it worked for me. You can recharge it to use more API nodes. They have many API tools you can explore. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you, Legends, and everyone who subscribed to the membership. Your support means a lot. Check the video description to see how to get the workflows for free from Discord. Yoitsu itachi